Welcome to NAMM's Believe in Music. I'm Craig Anderton, President of the MIDI Association. Connecting MIDI controllers and instruments, wirelessly and with low latency, had been a dream for years. But three elements were needed. A low latency wireless protocol, a way to convey MIDI over that protocol, and devices that implemented both. Because of MIDI's compact data stream compared to audio, Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE, solved the traditional Bluetooth problems of high latency and connection issues. With latencies under 10 milliseconds and seamless pairing, BLE opens up amazing real-time possibilities. The iPhone 4S, released in 2011, was the first smartphone to implement BLE. After putting a low-latency wireless protocol in place, Apple developed a version of Bluetooth MIDI and included it in the September 2014 release of iOS 8. However, progress did not stop there. The MIDI Association is where companies large and small come together to develop MIDI standards. Engineers from corporate MIDI Association members formed the Bluetooth MIDI Working Group. This group included Tori Walker from Apple, Phil Burke from Google, Pete Brown from Microsoft, and smaller companies like Novalia, represented by Kate Stone. Apple's initial work was tweaked and adopted by the MIDI Association as an industry standard. Bluetooth MIDI finally freed us from cables, and thanks to much lower power consumption than traditional Bluetooth, opened up a world of portable hardware controllers that connect wirelessly to computers, smartphones, and tablets. Windows 10 and Android Marshmallow 6.0 both included MIDI in their 2015 releases, and with Apple already on board, Bluetooth MIDI devices started to hit stores and stages around the world. The first product we know of to use Bluetooth MIDI was the interactive album cover Novalia, created for DJ Qbert's 2014 album release. It proved that now, almost anything could become a MIDI controller. Novalia's founder, Kate Stone, talks about how they've added MIDI to a dizzying range of objects. Hi, I'm Kate Stone. Since I was a child, I've dreamt that everything around me could be touch sensitive and magically connected. Well, for the last 15 years, my team and I at Novalia have been trying to make this dream a reality. We combine printed conductive ink and regular printed graphics to add touch sensitivity to paper. An attached Bluetooth module completes this illusion of magic. Back in 2012, we created our first musical Bluetooth poster, wirelessly connected to a computer, immersing a user in a jazz paper jam. In 2013, I was invited to speak at TED. I knew I wanted to do something special, something that would let people see that any object could become a musical interface. And this is the DJ turntable. So it's wirelessly linked to my iPad, and this is the software that's running on the iPad. Um, oh, yes. I just love doing that. <laughs> I'm not a DJ, though, but I just always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Bluetooth MIDI didn't yet exist, so we hacked an existing MIDI device and emulated it on a microcontroller module as a USB input to an iPad. A Bluetooth interface on the module created a wireless MIDI connection to my paper DJ Dex. DJ Cubert saw the TED talk and asked us to manufacture the cover for his new album. A user could spin the decks, start and stop the tracks, slide the crossfader, initiate loops and trigger sound effects. The album cover was sending Bluetooth MIDI to Algorithm's iPhone DJ app. At the time, there was no official Bluetooth MIDI release, so I joined the MIDI Association and became part of the group formalizing Bluetooth MIDI. Once iOS 8 was released, we printed a few thousand interactive album covers for DJ Qbert, which very quickly sold out. I added Bluetooth MIDI to my baseball cap, triggering air horns and sirens, while I jammed on stage at Moogfest with Bootsy Collins, who played a paper notebook keyboard.
few brands joined in the fun. For Pizza Hut, we added turntables to their pizza box. You have the standard setup of any normal DJ setup. You have your volume controls. You've got the pitch, speed up, slow down as normal. You've got your cue button, your sync button and your play button, of course. From McDonald's, we turned the tray liner into a music production station. Creating music can really trigger creativity in young people. That's why McDonald's in the Netherlands introduced McTrax. A paper placemat turned into a full music production station. We connected our placemat to your smartphone. Every touch point triggered a full sound bank to kickstart your creativity. Just select the beat and you're good to go. We created a midi garden at Insomniac's Nocturnal Wonderland in San Bernardino, California. Bowls of water, three two meter diameter mandalas and paper flowers on trees all became Bluetooth MIDI inputs to an immersive NASA space sound set on Ableton. For Bud Light at South by Southwest, we created walls that triggered stems from collaborating artists such as Aluna George and the X Ambassadors. I think it's really interesting because they're getting to see like the different elements of the song and why we put them together in the way that we have. With Bluetooth MIDI, everything around us can now trigger music. For some, that's a nightmare, but for me, it's a realisation of my childhood dream. <laughs> BLE's potential future applications are limitless, but it can also be used with today's gear, whether it was designed for BLE or not. Let's look at BLE MIDI adapters for existing MIDI hardware. In 2015, Quico, a MIDI Association member, came out with the first 5 pinned in to BLE adapter, the Quico Sound MI.1 Bluetooth MIDI controller. Yamaha was next and released the Yamaha MD BT01 in 2016. The USB version, the UD BT01, provided a wireless connection from your keyboard controller to a computer so you could now access your favorite music software. CME's BLE products, like the X-Key Air, add wireless operation to their already innovative line of X-Key keyboard controllers. Roland recently released their own BLE adapter. Beyond basic adapters, some Bluetooth MIDI devices are more system-oriented. For example, Quico's MI.1e is a multifunctional module which connects wirelessly to an iPad. It can operate as a sequencer, LFO, MIDI to CV interface, and more. The companion MI.1e Connect iPad app sends MIDI messages to the MI.1e which converts these messages to control volt and gate signals and exports them from eight signal ports on its front panel. CME's Witty Master can link MIDI devices without needing a computer, tablet or smartphone in the system. Let's see what Roger Lin has to say about Witty Master and how it works with his Lin instrument. Hi, uh, Roger Lin here, and I'm going to tell you today about a wonderful new product I discovered from my friends at the CME company called Witty Master. And what this is, this is a Bluetooth MIDI interface uh, for any device that has MIDI input and output jacks. And it's ingenious in its engineering. First of all, it's only $59, but it connects of two connectors, one that goes into your MIDI output jack and is powered by your MIDI output jack. Then another one, if you want to receive MIDI also, that goes into your uh, MIDI input jack and it receives its power over a tiny little cable into a jack in the MIDI output jack connector. So it's completely powered by itself and uh, uh, you don't need to have any batteries or anything like that. And then to uh, use this, it's very simple. They give clear instructions. Uh, you just go into on your computer to register the Bluetooth device as a MIDI device. And that's done, for example, on my Mac using the audio MIDI setup uh, just in a, a few seconds. Um, and what's beautiful about this, as I said, it's only $59, but two things that are great about it is number one, it has very low latency, as low as three milliseconds, which is unheard of for a Bluetooth device. The second thing is, is when I use it with my instrument, which has very dense MIDI streams, there's no uh, slowdown that's noticeable at all. It seems to handle all this expressive MIDI data very well. So I can play uh, and uh, it's just marvelous.
Oh, and by the way, I should have mentioned too, if you get two MIDI masters, uh, you could have a, uh, a MIDI device that's, for example, a hardware MIDI synth, uh, then you connect the two uh, plugs on the MIDI synth side, and then I have another one that you use uh, on your controller, in my case, in my case, the instrument, and then you can transmit entirely uh, uh, via Bluetooth between the two devices. So it works great not only with computers, but it works great also if you're just communicating between two MIDI devices. So there you go. Here's a great demo to show Bluetooth LE as a system with a Genki Wave Motion Control device, CME's Witty device, and a Roland Juno 60. BLE MIDI has been integrated directly into new products, and some of the products would not be possible without this wireless technology, like Artifon's Orba, which has multiple sensor inputs and connects via BLE to software like Ableton Live. Korg added Bluetooth MIDI as a firmware update to their NanoKey Studio and Nano Control Studio, and Roland has added Bluetooth capabilities in some of their hardware products, like the Jupyter XM, which can connect wirelessly to ZenBeats software. IK used Bluetooth MIDI to create a simple foot pedal to turn pages. It's ideal when reading from a score, moving through lyric sheets, and similar applications. BLE MIDI is exactly what was needed for the next generation of wind controllers. Roland started with the Aerophone 10 in 2017 and now offers a line of BLE-enabled Aerophones. MIDI Association member iAudio also came out with a new wind controller, an instrument with built-in sounds. These are the kind of products that have been inspired by wireless MIDI connectivity. Nor is BLE MIDI just for established companies. The DIY maker community has embraced what BLE can do. Adafruit offers off-the-shelf parts that support BLE MIDI, and there are literally hundreds of DIY MIDI projects including MIDI gloves, robotic BLE MIDI xylophones, and drum machines. Bluetooth MIDI has come a long way in the past few years. The vision of freedom enabled through wireless connectivity has been realized now that dreamers, engineers, hardware manufacturers, and software developers have come together to build a universally adopted standard. And it's just getting started. BLE can control lights, lasers, pyrotechnics, and more. With 5G coverage expanding and BLE mesh technology just starting to be implemented, the future of BLE MIDI will continue to hold surprises for musicians, developers, and artists everywhere, especially as MIDI 2.0 becomes prevalent. For the latest MIDI news, discussions, videos, and a monthly newsletter, join the MIDI Association. It's free to individuals involved in any aspect of music, technology, and the arts. Also, corporate membership is open to any commercial entity that designs, develops, or produces products that use MIDI technology. For more information, visit MIDI.org.